back in 2014 and 2015, you were the co-chair of the Ferguson Commission, which created um, recommendations for policy change after the uh, death of Michael Brown. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, given your work in that area, uh, if you're seeing parallels here um, in the current crisis with the coronavirus hitting disproportionately the black community there, any parallels uh, you're picking up on? Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. I was on a call earlier this week with the Association of Black Foundation Executives and Nat Williams, who's the, the executive director of the um, Hill Snowden Foundation, they support a lot of community organizing based in DC, uh, made the comment in one of the closing sessions that unfortunately we have reached this point where the only time black lives matter is when black people are dying. Right. Um, and so, and so, you know, and, and that, that in and of itself is exhausting. I mean, that's the point that he was making. I'm tired of the fact that black people's lives don't matter until black people are dying. And so we come from a black lives matter moment and we, we bookended here uh, with this moment of COVID-19. Uh, and it seems that, um, as I read earlier this week, it seems that when this was everybody's issue and everybody's problem, yeah. it was everybody's responsibility to stay home. And now that we see the disproportionality of black and brown people dying, it's time for us to get the economy back open and go back to work. Right. Um, so, so yeah, there is something about finding these two moments together right. and the realities that um, that we continue to see the first and foremost, life is about life, not livelihood. That's really well put. Life is first about life, not livelihood. With that in mind, where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple of pieces. I, I think in the same way that, um, and, and I've, been, I've been working with our local black newspaper, the St. Louis American on this, yeah. um, kind of talking with them about and hearing them talk about how to cover this versus how they cover Ferguson. Okay. Right, Ferguson, you know, the difficulty is that Ferguson was an, a, a one initiating event, right. which was the death of Michael Brown Jr. Right. Michael Brown died, but he died once. Right. And after that, it was a coverage of the response. Here, we have death counts daily. Right. And so the capacity to follow and tell the story is absolutely difficult. We, we have not fully told Jasmine Dixon's story, 31 years old. Red Cross, graduate of the historically black college here in St. Louis, Harris Stowe mm -hmm. State University. We have not told her story. We've not told Judith Wilson Griffin's story. Um, you know, a nurse, I don't know what nursing school she went to. I don't know why she got into nursing. Um, you know, but, but, but the, what we do know, these are caregivers, providers, people who have given themselves, themselves to um, the social sector, social services, and social change. And so I think we got to tell that story. But I also think, you know, part of the work we've got to do is to continue to organize. Um, um, one of the helpful things here that has been remarkably valuable that I commend you to is that uh, Black-led organizations, Art City Defenders, Action St. Louis, very early in the pandemic, put together uh, a list of demands for how elected officials should respond. Mm -hmm. uh, in every area, from uh, response to the unhoused to the incarcerated, really saying um, that we need to center the most marginalized and destitute people in the response, and you need to give an account for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and made that into a petition. Our organization, of course, signed on, helped to push it out and organize. More than 2,000 citizens in a week signed on to say, this is what the response needs to look like. Mm -hmm. I, I use that as an example to say that we have to begin to frame what relief and response look like from the perspective of black and brown communities who have been marginalized. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what we get is gonna be much worse than even what we've got now. Um, and so in as much as we have framed in this community, list of demands, we see the movement for black lives doing this nationally as well, list of demands and supports and mutual aid for relief and response. We also have to begin now to frame um, a list of demands and what the future will look like as we go into the mode of recovery or in some people's language, reopening. Uh, we have to determine what that's gonna look like. Um, so to your point about civil disobedience around the reopening of the economy, we need to start now to say what reopening looks like, what reopening will be from our perspective um, so that when it's not that, we can call on it, we can call it and have a reasoned uh, response in protest and resistance in the streets. 
And so I think that's that's what we want to, quite frankly, from Deaconess Foundation, that's part of what we're going to be investing in. Okay. Uh, we're going to be investing in Black-led organizations, first making it through this moment from a social sector standpoint yeah. uh, by building their capacity, investing in them with our own philanthropy, but also saying we're going to choose organizations that are going to frame the discussion. Yeah. Um, we're going to choose organizations uh, to work in a small cohort um, that will help to frame what recovery looks like in St. Louis by holding elected officials accountable, by mobilizing people in community, uh, and by holding uh, and, and by casting vision uh, for what Black futures should be in this community, uh, centering our health uh, and our well-being. We're going to launch some work later this week, uh, really kind of talking about uh, how we fund, how we support this and drive this from the Black perspective, and support people who are doing this work on the front line. Uh, at every single level. I'm excited about, you know, the, the Million Masks project um, that the Black Church PAC is leading uh, and Jack Dorsey, another St. Louisan, who's investing in that project. Um, but I think we've got to do that in this moment uh, for in the interest of a just relief and a just recovery. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and if we don't see that happening, then it's time to mobilize uh, a remarkable resistance.